But Rob, Kimuras don't work to change bigger people. <laughs> um, I will grant you that Kimuras from some positions under some circumstances don't work very well against bigger people. I would not be trying to perform a Kimura from the guard against somebody who's got 40 pounds on me. You just end up, well, let's do it. Yeah. We've both been there. Yeah, exactly. Like, you end up here, and then you just, right. yeah, exactly. They try and pass it over the other side, and the guy knows it's coming. It's exactly. And, um, okay, so not from the close guard. Not never, but at a certain point. Like, it's sure. Yeah. Um, your skill level and his, like, you might be able to get it on a bigger guy, but your skill level better be. Exactly. Like, I put it this way, I'm certainly never trying it on my brown belt, Shane, who's like 210, 220, and Jack. Like, it, it would just never work. Right. And he's actually bizarrely flexible, which is something to take into consideration from the bottom because you're not restricting the shoulder motion as much. Okay. But now, let's give me 40 pounds on you. I'm not, but let's pretend I am. Yeah. And let's make me younger and more jacked than I am. Yes. But you want to tap me out with a Kimura. Mm -hmm. So what are the details that you're taking into consideration? So we're not going to try from close guard. Mm -hmm. What is your strategy? If you really... I, I called your Kimura crap. It's never going to work. <laughs> I got proof wrong. Right. Um, I mean, I'll be honest from the start, which is to say that I use the Kimura as a control position, and I frankly use every submission as a control position. Yeah. We covered Kimura to back. Kimura to back, the, Kimura to arm bar, arm bar to back, all, exactly, yeah. all that kind of stuff. Um, and so I, I certainly don't want to live by the idea that I want to prove one submission, but assuming that I do have to do that, sure. assuming yeah, there's, uh, there's a bet on the line or something. Yeah. Um, the same thing that applies to the Kimura will apply to any submission, which is there are a, a series of uh, alignment breaks that we need to perform to make a submission work on a skilled, strong opponent. Uh, primarily taking all the slack out of the joint and creating some form of internal external rotation to uh, right. to weaken. So, so you have lots of internal rotation here. Yeah. But you want more. Well, yes, and there are details on how to gain it. So let's say that I've got the Kimura on this arm now. Uh, again, let's rotate a little bit here. Because one of the main things that I want to be able to do is prevent you from being able to connect your arms together in a meaningful fashion. So part of that is going to involve me bringing either my shin or my foot here into the gap between your elbow and your rib cage. Right? Right. Uh, again, sometimes, really sometimes the foot won't get in here, so I'll, you'll, we'll be prying with our shin. If we can get our foot in here, we'll be doing this. What this enables me to do, and I do favor this, is if I can start curling this back, it starts to separate that arm from that arm. Uh, again, the shin performs a similar function. I'll be driving my shin mm. away at this angle. So that kind of covers the main problem that people have, because it's not so much finishing you with the Kimura, like I've kimura some awfully large dudes if I could get that to happen. So right. if we can get this to happen, I would say you can make the Kimura work on somebody almost so regardless of I'm size. I'm grabbing my imaginary belt or my own pants, same thing. Yeah, so I mean the thing about this is it's, this is a grip on an object that is not amplifying the grip. With right. your hands, you, this arm is amplifying the grip. So if we're doing this, the, the structure of the submission, so let's start to get into what needs to happen. If I go, and this is where we talk about big guys being a problem, my two arms may not be stronger than your one arm isometrically. I have to overcome the inertia of your like isometric hold. So if I'm just using my arms to do it, you're never gonna break the grip. What I'm going to do is connect my chest to your arms. So now I'm gonna be doing a deadlift motion. And I'm pushing off, this isn't super visible, I'm pushing off with my right foot and using my back, my entire posterior chain, while connecting your arm to my body. So that's the first part, uh, which is, when we talk about breaking our opponent's alignment, we need to make sure I have good alignment. So you can generate power. So I can generate power. If I'm just generating power with my arms, it's not going to work. So let's just go back. So assuming you're holding here, and I'll just move out of the way here. So I'm going to be connecting your elbow triceps to my chest. I'm also going to be taking the grip that I have on your wrist. And this is one of the areas where you're going to want to use the thumb grip. Because if I make this, this sort of grip, I'm, I don't have great control of the rotation of your wrist. So I'm going to grip and I'm going to turn as I go. So I connect you and I turn and I pull away using You're that deadlift motion. this direction I'm pulling, in which I'm weak. We, yes, exactly. Because if I pull in this direction, I'm pulling against the hook that your finger is making right. on your shorts. This is if I was here and you're trying to move it this way. It, yeah, exactly. I can't move you in this direction. I can move you effectively in this direction. All right, so if I'm blocking your shin here, I start to create that rotation and I pull. Now I come up, and as I come up, can you feel the traction on your shoulder? Absolutely. Right. So Plus now, it's further to get back. To exactly. Safety. So now I'm going to remove that traction. Start like strengthen your arm, bring it back. Yeah, exactly. 
Now bring it back in. No way. That's the big thing. People tend to do a dynamic braking movement, and if it does break free, they relax it for a second. They don't maintain the traction when they go to put the hand behind the back. So again, someone who's quite strong and is trying to bicep curl you, maintaining that, trying to pull the shoulder out of the socket before we start our rotation this way is also going to be really helpful. The way I visualize it, and it's a little bit different from how you do it, is a triangle. I figure, pull the hand away, up, then up, and then behind. And, and then behind. Yeah, exactly. I mean, you're pulling up the whole time. Yes. So that, that's the, um, the distinction of like the triangle, that is the shape that you're making, but the actual biomechanics right. are actually like just as important, in some cases more important, because I can make that triangle shape with my arms right. and nothing will happen. Exactly. I can make the triangle shape with my arms and use my back, but if I don't maintain the traction and take the slack out of the joint, nothing will happen. So and these you things, pull straight up and then relax back down. Nothing will happen. Yeah. Right? So we have to bring all of these factors together because we are going up against someone with an overwhelming force disparity uh, against us. So I'm old enough to remember when north-south position was referred to by another name, with two numbers. The 69. The 69 position. <laughs> that seems to have fallen out of favor now that jiu-jitsu is for everybody. Yeah. Uh, but let's start in side mount. without a sense of humor. <laughs> uh, let's start in side mount and take me through the progression to get to that north-south position. You, we're in side mount, yeah. I'll grant you that position. You yeah. managed to separate, we're here. You want to come around me from here. So I'm threatening an arm bar on this side and an arm bar on this side. You're going to like try... An arm, a pressing arm bar Yeah, here. like a reverse arm bar here and a straight arm bar here. Yeah. So you're going to be trying to take that away, which you'll be able to do in the sense of internally rotating your shoulder, which is what I want, and you're going to be able to take that elbow away, which takes the arm bar on this arm thread away, but it does nothing about me controlling your wrist and your elbow. So I keep my left bicep coming across, and I create a hook with my right hand to prevent you from coming back in. My chest is heavy, so I'm kind of controlling your bottom arm. So now if you go to connect your hands, yes. not so no. much so I can start to bring this to the mat. I'm gonna walk around to the north-south, place my elbow on the floor, start to sprawl. I'll be dropping my shoulder to take the slack out. Start to lift your elbow while I push your hand down. So if I do manage, by some act of God, to bring my hands together, then you'd go to the north-south. Well, south. exactly. So, so then, I put my hands here. Exactly. So that's when we would start to go into what I'm talking about. I'll step my foot in, cover your head to break your posture. Let's just rotate. There we go. I'll cover your head to break your posture. I'll be maintaining live toes, which is the ball of my foot, or my right foot, on the ground. And now I'm going to start to curl this leg back to create that separation. While simultaneously connecting my hands, so get a hook up again. So I'm curling the leg back, creating that deadlift motion, traction in your arm, and then applying the finish. All right, so, you can more someone from the bottom, first sweep them, get <laughs> to the top, yeah. and then take your time. And I mean, the, you know, the, the guard against a individual with, you know, whatever, 30, 40, 50 pounds of muscle on you, you shouldn't be trying a lot of submissions. You should definitely, like I've seen, we've got some guys at my academy who are really good at, you know, guillotines, triangles, arm bars from the bottom, and then I see them go up against some dude who's got 60 pounds on them, and they try that same game, and I'm like, dude, I've told you, that guy will pick you up and just drop you on your head. Sweep them, get on the or, or get on their back. Right. That's the much better way to approach submitting somebody who's a lot bigger than you. Awesome. Thanks so much. My pleasure.